Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this loose um, Ron Ransom style river scene. Um, I'm using 90 pound quarter imperial size Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board. Um, my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. Um, and first I'm just going to roughly pencil in um, a sort of line where my river will go and where I've got sort of the bend in the river, a little bit of land sticking out. Just a little bit of guidance. Uh, when I put the, the paint in, I kind of know where I'm going. A little bit of a bank over this side, which, which is going to have trees growing from it. I'm going to use my large Chinese harky brush to just wet the page um, the sky area and where I'm going to have my woodland. There's not going to be very much sky. Um, I'm just going to start it off with mixing up a sort of fairly a medium to weak mix of raw sienna. I'm just going to warm up most of the sky and woodland area with that just to take away the glare of the white of the paper and to give me a sort of a base to start painting my trees on. I've got some cerulean blue. I'm just going to put it across the top. I don't want much sky here. I uh, just want a little bit of blue to show above the tree line. So it's just a medium mixture. You can see with gravity it's kind of traveling down the page a bit, but that's fine. I'll put a little tiny bit across uh, where my river's going to be. Just smooth that out a bit so it's quite a nice sort of graduated wash just across the very top. Next I've mixed up a mixture of the cerulean blue and the raw sienna into quite a weak mixture uh, about the same thickness as what I used for the sky and I'm just roughing in um, my distant trees. I couldn't show you the colour mixing there because I'm having to work very quickly before this dries. Just randomly putting in these pale background trees that hopefully will sort of almost disappear and diffuse um, softly but will just give me the impression of distant trees and I'll build up some layers over some of the closer areas on the left and the right just going to get in the shape of a few banks just very roughly this is just an underpainting it's going to look quite ugly for a while but hopefully now I'm going to start putting in some of the firmer trees while the paper's still wet but with very much thicker paint here this is perylene green it's a lovely rich green and I'm just putting that in very roughly with my um, small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush this time. I'm just dotting and dabbing it here and there using the tips of the brush, the flat of the brush and the corner um, just to vary up the shapes and shades and amount of paint that I'm applying um, to give me a nice random loose, um, sort of the look of loose random tree canopies, uh, but more sort of foreground trees here. So. Um, I want to, you know, quite a lot of uh, variation in shape, shades and tone here. I've gone back to my Chinese harky brush. It's about three inches, so it gives me a nice chiseled edge to be able to put in the banks. Um, and I'm putting in the banks with, I think, sepia, Payne's grey and the perylene green. Now back to the perylene green. Um, over for the left side to put in more of the banks and the landscape. Now, I'm sorry I missed out a bit of filming there but I used a plastic um, store card and ran the corner of that up through the damp paint to create the start of my trees. I'm carrying on putting in some more banks, maybe a turn of the river across the, of the front here. Just mapping things out really here at this stage. Now I'll just go in with the corner of a piece of store card again and just pull out some more branches, just some slightly finer branches this time, just to finish off 
um, this layer of the painting. Just pulling the card through the paint and you can see that it's lifting the paint out and giving me some nice loose uh, branch and trunk shapes. I think I just need a little bit more dark in before I let it completely dry. So using the tips of the small harky brush, I'm going to dot in some almost tube consistency perylene green. And then I'll move on to, I think, a bit of um, a sort of mixture of Payne's grey and um, sepia, just to darken up along the edges of the banks in places. Keeping it nice and loose. Just want to suggest rather than um, paint exactly. And that's what I think it is about loose painting is, is practicing and building up the confidence to be able to uh, paint loosely, knowing that when you put the details in at the end, it will come together um, and, and should hopefully look okay. Just going to soften out some of these um, banks a little bit, just with the tips of a damp um, three quarter inch flat brush and just sort of maybe flatten out those lines that are gonna be of the, where the land's um, touching the water, the sort of water edges, so to speak. Uh, coffee's ready, so I'm just gonna have a cup of coffee and give it a good look over just before I leave it to dry and just see if there's anything else that I can do to it while it's still wet. And I think maybe just to pull through a few sticks and twigs here and there, um, just while the paint's wet. And just that just adds a, a little bit more suggested detail. And I think that'll do now, I'll leave it to dry. Now it's completely dry. Um, I think I'm just going to go in first with my medium sized rigger brush. I think it's a size three. It's a De La Rowney graduate brush. And I've got a mixture of Payne's Grey and Sepia and a bit of Burnt Sienna to make this, this really dark brown. Um, and I'm just going to carefully put in my tree trunks and tree branches. I'm leaning them in across the tape on the right side so it looks like we're just seeing part of this tree in the painting. Just touching in a few darks where I think I might need just a bit more tone. Just the indication of some tree trunks down at the bottom of this little headland or riverbank. I'm just going to run some of that same dark tone just underneath in places along the river, um, the riverbank where it meets the water, just to sort of emphasize that that a little bit. I'll be putting the reflections in a bit later. I want to get these trees pretty much detailed loosely first. As it's a loose painting, I'm trying to be quite um, quick with my strokes um, and tapering off towards the ends of the branches so the strokes get a little bit finer. I'm going to do the same over this side. I'm going to be starting off right on the on the left and trying to bring in some of the branches a little bit higher across the painting across the tape so it looks as if they're they are branches from trees that are out of the picture trying to lean my trees in a bit as well on both sides um, so it looks as if they're leaning towards the light area that's being created in the forest by the river. 
and they would sort of grow that way naturally. So I'm trying to create that sort of effect. I'm trying to keep my branches um, fairly random, trying not to copy the same sort of shapes, but it's very easy to do that. I think I might have done that just there with some of the branches, but hopefully I shall crisscross them a little bit more and so that any repeated shapes and rhythms of branches will just kind of disappear as I build up this um, tangle of trees. I'm taking care not to hide all of the white tree branches and tree trunks that I created when I dragged my card corner through the damp paint because they add different sort of like light reflecting on the trees and and they add some interest to the painting so I'm trying to keep them I'm not covering them up I'm going to keep painting in these tree trunks until I get about almost halfway in um, and then I'll stop because what I've painted um, in the background in the wet in wet and with the card in that paler area is my distance so I'm not going to put any detailed dark tree trunks across there I want that paler area to recede a little bit back further into the picture if possible so I'm almost ready to stop. I think I've just got a couple more trees just to put in. Now I'm just going to leave the trees to dry and then I'll move on to the river and the reflections and any other finishing touches. So I'll see you soon. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to paint in the river and I'm still using my small Pro Art Harky brush and I've mixed up a mixture of um, the perylene green and cerulean blue with a little tiny bit of um, the raw sienna in it to make a sort of bluish green for the river and it's quite a dilute pale mixture i'm just pulling it across the river area horizontally and leaving plenty of of white gaps just to rough in the water now i want to paint the reflections quite strongly for this painting so i'm going to pull down some very rich perylene blue sorry, perylene green underneath the tree areas right down to the tape, but leaving the central area where the distant trees are fairly clear of reflections at the moment. Now I've used strong vertical strokes for my reflections um, to try and create the look of reflections with the verticals and ripples and light on the surface of the water with the horizontals, which I will pull in some horizontal strokes just to try and um, blend in these reflections just a little bit more. And I've washed out my Harky brush completely, squeezed all the water out, and I'm now going to pull out some water lines um, across the surface of the water, try and get back to white paper if I can in a few places, uh, just to add that sparkle to the water. And then to balance up, I've used the, the flat brush, the tips of the flat brush, just to drag the existing paint that's in the river, just gently in places, horizontally, across the surface of the water, again to, um, to add that kind of ripple and reflection look to the water. Still keeping it loose, but hopefully trying to pull things all together now. Now, while that layer of the water is drying, I'm mixing up 
um, a much paler mixture of the tree trunk and tree branch mixture and using a fine rigger and I'm just with very pale paint almost just pale brown just going to strengthen up a few of the trees in the distance not many I want a lot of them to actually look blurry and pale but just going to put in a few slightly stronger marks just to bring that area together and, and link that in to the rest of the painting. Just maybe put in a few sort of thinner branches here and there. Because as I paint, I'm trying to focus on the whole picture and not just the area that I'm working on to make sure that the area that I'm working on balances with the rest and I make some adjustments as I go if I need to. Now with the tips of the Harky brush, I'm just dabbing into green and brown paint and just going to just touch in a little bit of very loose undergrowth underneath those trees just to bed them in a bit maybe just here and there in the foreground as well. Using the same paint just to quickly dry brush down over the river water that's there already, just to add some more darks and some different shades of the reflected trees. And then just going back in a little bit more across the bank there. I think we're nearly there. Just need to, I think I'm going to put in sort of like a dead tree. Just a skeleton tree or a bit of old branch just poking out of this little bit of river bank here using my number three rigger. I want that quite nice and dark and I'm going to reflect that in the water just by sort of making a sort of just a very rough loose wiggly sort of set of lines that kind of follow the shape of that and I'm going to put a few sort of similar lines in to kind of represent those main branches that we can see in the trees and to represent them just vaguely in the reflection. I'll do the same over over here on the left as well. And I think that will do. I don't want to overdo it too much. I mean, I could carry on and do some more, but I think I'll leave it at that. It's, it's just a, a loose painting and sort of an experiment to try and paint in very much in the fast and loose Ron Ranson style. So I'm removing the tape, carefully peeling it away from the painting to make sure that if it was to tear the paper, it would tear away from the painting itself. And there we have it. There's the painting with a nice clean white border. And I think that works fairly well. I'm quite pleased with it. There's a nice, bright, sunny look to it. We can see that there's plenty of white unpainted paper um, that helps with the light across the painting. There are some nice, really nice dark tones. We've got the, the lifted out trees, the painted trees, um, a nice pale sky with a sort of distant tree line blending in nicely. Well, thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click on the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post uh, a new video, which is once or twice a week at the moment. Um, thanks so much to my lovely patrons in my Patreon group who support this channel. Um, I'll see you again soon. Um, take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.